Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are continuing on another episode of my All Zatanna Appearances series where we take a look of every single one of Zatanna's appearances throughout the DC comic book universe. And this series might take me seven months, seven years, or even seven decades to complete, but that doesn't matter because the reason why we're here is because we love talking about her as much as we can. And so without further ado, today we are going to be talking about Zatanna's first appearance in Grant Morrison's Seven Soldiers Run. Seven Soldiers is a comic book meta-series written by Grant Morrison and it's kind of a universe contained within its own series and it features the stories of seven superheroes, Zatanna being one of them. The other ones are Bulleteer, Frankenstein, Clarion, Manhattan Guardian, Mr. Miracle, and Shining Knight. I could dive deeper into the context of this massive sprawling story, but we're going to keep things simple and we're going to focus on Zatanna's issue specifically. And as usual, we're going to cover the plot of the issue, her character moments, uh, her powers, how she's using them, her personality, and taking a look at her relationships with the other characters in this universe. So the comic opens with this really striking image of Zatanna sitting in what looks like one of those alcoholic anonymous groups and she confesses that she is a spellaholic. And this is where we see that she's actually in a superhero support group meant for superheroes who perhaps have lost their confidence, lost their way, aren't feeling like themselves, have have experienced some type of failure in their own ways. And she's made fun of by some other members of the group because, you know, she's famous, she's been with the Justice League, what problems could she have? And she starts telling them about how she grew up with her father, who was a famous, prolific magician who knew how to handle his powers, and he was always basically the best guy out there, and she could never compare to him. And she begins also recounting a story, which happened a little more recently than that, where she set off with a bunch of other characters, um, her friends presumably, to go to this magical plane in search of her father's lost books. So this makes up the majority of this comic. So we see Zatanna venturing into this other plane, and this is in a time where her father has died, and she's convinced that her father left behind um, several books of magic that once was important to him and is therefore important to her as well. Now she's telling the story of how this ritual came to be. She went to Winter's Gate Manor with Timothy Ravenwind, Ibis the Invincible, his wife Taya, and Doctor Thirteen. So when they get to the magical plane, I feel like this comic isn't really a case of a traditional superhero action comic where there's a real bad guy that's happening. I feel like it's more of an unraveling of a mystery because even the way they frame the story with her, um, the opening panel of her at the superhero um, support group and she's telling her story, she's recounting these events. So I think the point of it is to realize how she got to the position she's in now. And when they're in the magical plane, we don't actually see them fighting any bad guys, so to speak. There are a bunch of scary things there, but they're mostly trying to weave their way through in search of this book or these books. As these things get more perilous, Zatanna transports them all out of there before the entire universe swallows them whole. Eventually they reach this peaceful place where they see a tree that looks like it has books on its branches and Zatanna's convinced that this is where my father kept his books. But then she starts to notice that the tree grows a face on it that looks really sinister and I think even as the audience you're like, oh, something's not right here. <laughs> and it flashes back to a moment where she is trying to summon. So this moment happened a little before this trip happened. It's Zatanna alone in her room summoning the man of her dreams because she's feeling a little lonely. And it cuts back to her at the summoning table with her friends and they're all dead. That face that formed on the tree was an elemental shapeshifter who followed her into the magical plane and vaporized her companions. And this is a very dangerous and world-destroying character that 
Um, we're kind of left at a cliffhanger as to what Zatanna is going to do next about him. But for now, that was the whole plot covered. Now we're going to take a deeper look into her character, how she's portrayed in this comic, uh, her personality, the powers that she displays, and yeah, her relationships with the other characters in the story. So from the very first page, we get a sense that Zatanna has really hit rock bottom here. <laughs> and we see that through a couple of different things. Um, number one, I think visually you see that she's out of her usual superhero costume. She's kind of like in a ratty t-shirt and jeans, and she's clearly not feeling or looking so much like herself. Her confidence has been shattered and her powers aren't working. She's been stripped of everything usually shiny and sparkly about her. So in the flashback scene with her father, we see her inexperience with magic, her carelessness with the emphasis of oops as a spell continuously, or I think oops is the name of the bunny. And I think she's really hard on herself in, the, in these instances. And in the next flashback scene we see, we see her going into Winter's Gate Manor and she's in her dazzling magician outfit with her top hat and she gets complimented on it. So Zatanna thanks Baron Winter for hosting all of them and he says, For you, my dear Zatanna, anything. The new outfit's sensational. You can tell by the way Zatanna talks about her dad that she puts a lot of her faith in him, she admires him a lot, and she looks up to him. And I think she worries a lot about how she can or can never live up to that. She says, see, my dad wasn't just this great stage magician, he was a sorcerer and a warrior. She says, he died fighting the forces of evil. He was like that. As someone so well-versed in magic and who was born with it, Zatanna's natural abilities allows her to usually be very confident, because magic is where she feels at home in herself. One of them in their group, Terry, Doctor Thirteen, is a skeptic of magic, and Zatanna can be a very captivating guide when she can be. I feel like she is the bridge between these two worlds in the DC Universe, because oftentimes when she is with her allies who don't often use magic, such as Batman for example, they're often skeptical of her because of it. So I feel like she really does a good job of like helping people understand um, the other world which they may not be a part of. So she says to Terry, you challenged me to show you something that wasn't stage magic, Terry. So close your eyes and watch. So this isn't a character point, but one of the things that I absolutely love about this comic, this issue in particular, is how creative they get with all the multiverse hopping. Once they're inside the magical plane, once they're in uh, King Ramen's kingdom, uh, his domain, I think they have, the artist did a, such a good job of capturing that vivid imaginative way that different universes collide. It has a very Doctor Strange vibe about it. Things look like they're coming out of mirrors, um, 3D and 2D kind of folds into each other. Uh, <laughs> it's like all of these images look a lot like optical illusions, which actually fits very well with Zatanna's character and what she represents as a whole, because she represents real magic and stage magic. She's essentially a tour guide between the realms, which is pretty cool, because I feel like a lot of people know her, a lot of people trust her, even King Ramen introducing her to this universe says, it's nice to see you again, Zatanna. Like, why does she have this established relationship with this huge celestial figure? And I kind of love that about her. She gets along well with almost everyone. She's good at making a lasting impression on people, which I like. So another aspect of her personality that we see here is her loneliness, actually. Because the reason why she summoned this shape-shifting man accidentally. It stems from her loneliness that a lot of people don't seem to notice. She's a lonely extrovert, that's what she is. And she even says that um, she hadn't told this story before, but before they summoned this, um, before they actually did the, their trip to the magical plane, she was at a book launch of Terry's a few days ago. So that's like, that's really nice of her. She's out there, she's supporting her friends in their careers and their pursuits. And um, she admits that she got tangled with unfortunate men, as she usually does. And I feel like it's kind of a running gag at this point um, that Zatanna has bad taste in men. Because, you know, you have John Constantine, you have Nick Necro, 
And now you have this guy that she conjured out of thin air, even when she was trying to conjure her perfect man, it ends up like this. So something, something's clearly wrong with her <laughs> in this regard. She says, my ideal man is a monster I set free to destroy the world. Spellaholic. It's a problem, right? Ultimately though, despite her flaws, Zatanna is a good person who never gives up. And you see that she still has that magnetic pull about her, that even when she's lost everything, there are people out there who still admire her because of all the good she's doing, because of all her superheroic work, because of um, the books, and we see Misty here coming up to her after the, the meeting and saying, end of the world, huh? Will you sign my book? And I feel like that's the exact type of energy that Zatanna would have if um, an idol of hers were to struggle. She would kind of just brush it off and be like, I, I get it, you know, I know how it is. So Misty's telling her, I love the way you write about magic. It's so like down to earth and non-preachy. Could you like teach me how to do it like you? I'd even pay and everything. And Zatanna says, hey Misty, the only thing I could teach you right now is how to turn soaring success into abject failure. Seriously, if the world even survives my stupidity, I'm going back to stage. No more superheroics. But she's saying all this as she's signing the book for Misty. <laughs> and she says, I can't do it anymore. That's what I was talking about in there. I lost my magic powers. And Misty says, you don't have to do it. And this is where the interesting part comes, because Misty says, taxi appear backwards, and a taxi does appear. So it is revealed that Misty has a very similar set of powers to Zatanna. So in terms of her powers shown here, we've discussed a little bit of this in the plot section, um, but the list that we see in no particular order is uh, reality bending, uh, traveling and manipulation through the planes, and supernatural summoning, even by accident. I feel like the highlight of this comic is watching how she travels through this magical plane with ease. It even bends to her command and at her will. Even her companions, who are strong magicians in their own right, seem a lot more apprehensive than her. There's this moment when they all get stuck and they're trying to find a way to escape and Terry says, no way out of a closed system. Don't you see how it all has to fall down in the end? And this other guy's saying, it's gnawing into everything, as in the world around them. But Zatanna simply says, get us out of here backwards. And if I say there's a way, there's a way. And this is the way. Move it, Tim. So there's this huge door that just opens for them. Everyone is struggling in this new plane of reality. Uh, they're not in their own world. Things are collapsing left and right. And these are all like magicians, except for Terry. And so you would think that they would have some semblance of an idea as to how to get out of there. Um, but no, it's just Satana saying, get us out of here. <laughs> and I think that just shows how strong her natural energy um, and her powers are, which is pretty cool. And I think that's something I would love to see a lot more of, um, especially the reality bending side of things. So overall, I thought this was a really great introduction and starting point for this mini series, setting up a clear arc for both her character and the overall story because now we have um, several things to look forward to. It's like Zatanna's redemption arc so to speak and we want her to see her get her powers back because she she can't do it anymore. We want to see her train Misty and we want to see her um, get the shape-shifting man that she's <laughs> released out into the world and stop them. So have you read the Seven Soldiers series? What did you think of it? And if you have read the rest of the series, which ones would you recommend as your favorites? I know you should probably read the whole thing, but if you were to pick any of the other characters um, that have their own mini arcs and mini series within them, let me know your favorites down in the comments below, and I will check them out at some point. Until then, I hope you guys have a great week ahead. Uh, thanks for stopping by on this channel, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Alright, thank you guys. Take care. Goodbye.